Hi, this is John Whitaker uh, for the Probability 1 class, and this is our 10th <clears throat> video lecture. And today, Wayne, today, Travis, we're going to move away uh, from looking at probabilities involving single variables, single random variables, and look at the interplay between um, two random variables, or more, but right now we'll just talk about two. And uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get started by <clears throat> writing the definition of what the joint PML between two random, two discrete random variables. So given two discrete definition, and um, we want to write up some facts. So, <clears throat> about the uh, joint PML. So, let f of x comma y be the joint PML uh, of x and y. Then, we have two facts on the list. One is that because f of x comma y is some probability, that means that f of x comma y is sandwiched in between 0 and 1. And the second fact is that if you were to sum over all x values uh, such that f of x comma y is greater than zero, and, so this is a double sum, sum over all y values such that f of x comma y is greater than zero. If you sum up the quantity f of x comma y, what you're going to get is one. So if you do this double sum of f of x comma y, you're going to get one. And f of x comma y is always Bigger than or equal to zero, but never bigger than one. Okay, let's look at an example. So, an urn consists of one red ball and two white balls. Ball is selected at random from the arm. And then a car is selected at random from a standard deck. Let's let x be a random variable, discrete one. 
which deals with the iron. So we're, let's let x sub y be equal to uh, 1. I'm sorry, x of red be equal to 1. And x of white be equal to 2. Okay. And y of a heart, let's let that be equal to 2. y of a diamond, let's let that be equal to 3. And y of a black card, Let's let that be equal to uh, 4. Then what we want to do is we want to find the joint PMF of X and Y. So here, uh, let us think about what the outcome values are for the joint P, uh, P, uh, PMF. Um, it seems like X can run from uh, 1 and 2, and Y can run from 2, 3, and 4. And so for all other little X and little Y values, F of X comma Y is going to be equal to 0, and I'm not going to consider those. So here's what I'll do. I'll say, well, no. If we look at F of 1, 2, what is this? This is the probability that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. What is that? That's the probability of red. And then this was a heart, I think. Now, what's the chance that these happened in this random experiment? Well, the chance that we get a red ball, how many ways could I get a red ball? There's one out of, uh, there's one way. Okay? And how many ways could I get a heart? There's 13. For each way I could have gotten a red ball, there's 13. Now, uh, how many ways could I have gotten a ball? That's three. And for each one of these three ways I could have gotten a ball, how many well, ways could I have gotten a card? That's 52. This ends up being one-third times one-fourth, and so we end up being one-twelfth. Well, what about f of one comma three? Well, this is the probability x is equal to one, y is equal to three, I'm not going to put as much detail on this computation as I did on the first one. Uh, now here, red ball is one way to do that. And probably uh, y is equal to 3 means you got a diamond, I think. And that's 13. Again, this is over 3 times 52. You get 112 again. Okay. I'm computing the joint PDF. Now, of 1 and 4, uh, well, let's see. How many ways could I get that X is 1 was one way? How many ways could I get that Y is 4? That means I got a black card. That's 26 ways. Again, the number of ways the experiment uh, can be done is 3 times 52. And so what we end up getting is 1 sixth here. We'll go through the same calculations, essentially, same type of calculation, except I'm going to do it where now X is equal to 2. So here, F of 2... 2, uh, that's going to be equal to, well, I'll write this one down. So probability that, that uh, x is 2, y is 2. What's that mean? That means that we got a white ball. The chance of that happening is 2 out of 3. And then in the top, y is equal to, what that have is 13 out of 52. And so we end up getting here, this is 1 fourth. I think we end up getting uh, 1 sixth of this answer. Likewise, you'll find that f of 2, 3, that's equal to 1, 6, as, let's see, let me write a little details here. It's probably x is 2, y is 3, what is that? That's the chance of, uh, uh, we got white ball, which is 2 out of 3, 
times the tenth, so we've got a diamond, which is one out of four, and so here we get one sixth. And then finally, f of uh, two, four, uh, that's probability x is two, y is four, that ends up being two out of three times uh, the chance that y is four is one half, and that's even one third. F of x comma y equals to zero otherwise for all other x, y patterns, x, y combination patterns. So that's the joint PMF for this example. Okay, the one thing I want you to notice in, on the previous board was that um, it's definitely the case that the joint uh, PMF is greater than or equal to zero for all x and y, and it's also less than or equal to one for all x and y. The next thing I want you to notice, and I'll look at this, note the sum, the double sum, and I'm just going to put x and y here. Of course, we're only looking at the x values and the y values, where the uh, joint PMF is greater than zero, but of f of x comma y, and by our fact, that should be equal to one. But let's see. Here, the x values are one to two, where the joint PMF is greater than zero, and the y values are from two to four. So what this is equal to, it's f of, here's the way we do this. We let x be fixed, it's one, and we let y run for whatever it's going to. So one to two, plus f of 1 to 3, plus f of 1 to 4, plus, and now <laughs> the second term, the second grouping of, of, of sums that we have is when x is 2, and so what I'm going to have is f of 2, comma, and now y is going to run through what it does, 2, plus f of 2, 3, plus f of 2, 4. And when I add these up, here's what I get. So we did this, I'm looking at the board here, it's 112 plus 112 plus 1 6th, that's the first three numbers, plus uh, this was 1 6th plus 1 6th uh, plus 1 3rd. I think the common denominator is 12, so we get 1 uh, 12 plus 1 12 plus 2 12 plus 2 12 plus 2 12 plus 6 12. And then when I add these up, there's 6, 10, 11, 12. That does equal to 1. 12 over 12. So that's 1. So uh, this particular uh, joint PMF satisfies the two uh, facts that uh, we said all joint PMFs uh, would satisfy. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, a definition. Because if um, f of x comma y is the joint uh, PMF of two discrete random variables, X and Y, then the PMF, the probability uh, mass function, the probability mass function of one X, and that's F sub X of X, that can be obtained from the joint by summing up all, over all the Y's such that F of X comma Y is greater than zero of f of x comma y. And two, so this is of y, and I want to note that the, this is the PMF of y. What it is, is the sum over all x values, such that f of x 
comma y is greater than zero of the joint PMF f of x comma y. So if you want to recover the PMF, the single, uh, the PMF of a single random variable from the joint, what you do is you sum the joint uh, PMF uh, with respect to the other variable. I like to prove it, uh, one part, part one of this, and part two is identical. So here's the proof of part one. So here we let f of x comma y be the joint PMF of x and y. Then, um, the problem, uh, then now, so x, then I'll say this way, then the PMF of x equal to its f sub x of x. That's well no. So it's f of x, but I'll put the sub x because we have two random variables running around. And that's the probability of big x is equal to little x. Well, I'll say that's the same thing as the probability that big x equals to little x. And here I'll just say this statement that y is its output value is a real number. Because we know that y's output value is a real number. So when does both of these happen? When x is equal to little x. But the way that we can think of y being a real number, because y is a discrete random variable, this probability x is the element of x, uh, x is equal to x. And here I'll say it's a union over some countable, at most countable set, i, of uh, y equal to some output value y sub i. And there's only, at most, countable number of these y sub i's. And this is an and. Turns out, for set theory, we can rewrite this as the probability of the union that x is equal to x and y is equal to y sub i. Now, for and this is as i runs from whatever it does run from. For each different i, y sub i is different, and it turns out then that we have a bunch of events here, and each one of them are mutually exclusive, and we're giving them up. So this is the sum over all the i's, and I'll just say over all the y sub i's, of uh, the probability x is equal to x, and y is equal to y sub i. Okay. And so I'll rewrite this in symbolism but that's the sum over all possible y values uh, for which this is non-zero of f of x comma y. And that's what we'll be trying to show. And I'll just make a comment over here. Um, well, I'll make it over here. So as a comment, uh, the proof of part two, this is the second part of this having to do with y, is analogous. I mean, it's essentially identical, except the roles of x and y are reversed. OK, so uh, the next thing I want to do is an example. 
So let us uh, let f of x comma y be equal to x plus y over 21, where, in this case, x comma 1 and 2 and y equals 1, 2, and 3. And here's what I want to do. I want to find um, the, so that's the joint PMF. I want to find the PMF of Y. So it's not too bad of a problem. Here's what we'll do. We'll know F sub Y of Y by definition. I'm going to write it kind of uh, informally. It's the sum over all the X values of F of X comma Y. The joint well, what do, what do I mean by all the x values? All the x values where the uh, where the joint PMF is non-zero. So that's the sum as x runs from one to two of f of x comma y. Well, that's nothing more than f sub one of y plus f sub, f of not sub f of two comma y. Well, what's f of one comma y? Well, it depends on what y is. That's what we should be doing, something depending on what y is. It's a function of y. It's going to be 1 plus y over 21 plus 2 plus y over 21. And that's 3 plus 2y over 21. And so f sub y of y is equal to what I just found, 3 plus 20, uh, 3 plus 2y over 21. Where? What does y run from? Y can be equal to 1, 2, or 3. Well, if we can talk about uh, interplay between discrete random variables, well, we're going to be able to do the analogous between uh, interplay between uh, continuous random variables. Uh, so here's the definition. We say uh, we say two random variables. X and Y are jointly continuous if uh, there exists a, a function. Where for all of B, A, and B subsets of R, then so probability X is an element of B, Y is an element of sorry, X is an element of A, and Y is an element of B is equal to the interval, and I'm going to write down here, over B, over A, of F of X comma Y, and I'm going to write down DX, DY. It turns out, because of properties that F of X comma Y have, we're going to be able to interchange, switch the order of integration uh, all the time. And so, uh, in this case, The function, or I'll just say f of x comma y, is called the joint probability density function of x and y.
Okay? So here's some facts. So we're going to run f of x comma y d the joint uh, probability density function, which I'm going to abbreviate the idea of x and y to random variables. Then, one, here, f of x comma y, he's got to bring that in from zero for all x and y. He doesn't have to be same uh, uh, between zero and one. He could be bigger than one. And the second thing that's satisfied is that if you integrate over the whole real line, not over the whole real line, but whole, over the whole x, y plane, of f of x comma y, D, uh, here I write down dx dy is what I customarily do. Then you get one. So what we think of is that this f of x comma y is some function over the xy plane, and the volume uh, that function is always greater than or equal to zero, and the volume between that function, the volume of that, that curve, that surface that's above the xy plane, and the xy plane, that volume is equal to one. Okay, so let us look at an example. So here, instead of a scenario, I'm just going to give you the joint PDF. So let f of x comma y be equal to, well, it's going to be a piecewise defined function. It's 5 sixteenths x y squared if 0 is less than x is less than y is less than 2 and zero otherwise. Alright, so that's what we have. Um, so let this be the joint PDF of two random variables, x and y. Then, what we're going to show is that if we sum this up, sorry, not sum, but integrate, we're going to get 1, and I'd like to look at it. So Travis, <clears throat> you had asked me about things to know, and I said, well, this is what's upcoming for us at the time that we had our own campus meeting in terms of integration over the XY plane, so that's something to review. Here I'm going to do through this example a little bit of review. Well, we got f of x comma y is defined to be non-zero over a certain region along the x-axis. So uh, on the x-y plane, what region is over the square, or at least part of the square, that is this zero to two along the x and zero to two along the y? Not all of it. Remember, we're looking here, zero is less than x is less than y is less than two. So the x values have to be between zero and two for the joint PDF to be non-zero and the y. But not only that, the x values have to be less than y. Well, let's look at y equal to x. It's not quite what's there, but let's uh, look at that. So here is this line. This line breaks up this square into two parts. And as we said on the day that we uh, had our own campus meeting, what we do is we see which region really satisfies this by picking a point from uh, each one of these regions. So I'm going to uh, pick a point here. So let's say I pick point one. So point one, this point is point one, let's say 1.7. Does that point satisfy that its x value is bigger than zero? It does. That its x value is less than y, that point one is less than 1.7, and the y value is less than two. Yes, this is the right region, this upper triangle, which is what we're going to be um, concentrating on, but that is the region along the xy plane for which f of x comma y is going to be non-zero. Now, this other region doesn't work, so if I take something from down here, like um, 1.7, uh, point 1, you see that the x is not less than the y, so this region isn't included. That's what we're integrating with. So, uh, here, note the double integral of minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, of f of x comma y, dx dy. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I don't have to look at it over the whole XY plane because most of the time the joint PDF is zero. So where is it non zero? Well, I'm going to still write down DX dy. <clears throat> where is it non zero in the joint PDF? It's non zero over this triangular region. How do I um, define or uh, how do I describe this triangular region here uh, with my limits of integration? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, what do the y base go from? Well, for the whole region here, the y base go from 0 to 2. Smallest one, 0. Biggest one, 2. And for each y value you can pick, I pick this one. It doesn't matter which one I pick. What do the x values go from? The x values run from 0 to this line. That's 0. But what is that line in terms of y? What is x equal to? It's equal to y. And then where, what is f of x comma y over that region? Wait a minute, 5 sixteenths x, y squared. Well, that's correct. So we're trying to show that this part is equal to 1. So here, I integrate with respect to x first. This first integral I leave alone. This is 5 sixteenths. Antiderivative of the y squared is considered a constant. 5 sixteenths is considered a constant. The antiderivative of the x is x squared over 2 y squared, and then I've got to evaluate from 0 to y, whatever I get for that, then I have dy. Y. So this integral from 0 to 2, when I let x be equal to, these are x values. When I let x be equal to 0, oh well, first of all, I'll stick in x equal to y. What I'm going to get is 5 sixteenths, well, there's 2 times 16 makes 32. 5 32. Here I have y squared times y squared, that's y to the fourth, minus whatever I get when I let x be zero. When I let x be zero, this whole expression is going to become zero. So it's minus zero. And then dy. And that, of course, is an integral from zero to two of 5 30 seconds y to the fourth dy. This is the anti power rule, so uh, anti differentiation for this guy. We'll write down the constant. We raise y to one higher power and divide by that new higher power and evaluate that from zero to two. The fives cancel, so I'm left with one over 32. I stick in uh, two to the fifth minus one over 32. When I stick in zero, zero to the fifth, and of course that's one minus zero, which equals to one. So in this case, the double integral from minus infinity to infinity of the joint PDF equal to 1. And that's what we're going to have happen every time, but this was just an example where I showed you. Okay. Um, here as fact, if f of x comma y is the joint PDF of x and y, then the PDF of x, I'll write down f of x of little x, is equal to, here it's going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the joint PDF with respect to y over the whole xy plane, and 2 of y, f of y of little y, so the the PDF of y is nothing more than the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the joint PDF, and then this would be uh, with respect to x. So instead of sums, as we had when we were talking about the PDFs being obtained from the joint uh, probability mass function for discrete random variables, instead of sums, we're doing integrals 
And again, we integrate with respect to the opposite variable. So <clears throat> let me uh, show a proof of this. So I'm going to let f of x comma y. I'm going to show a proof of part one only. Um, be the joint PDF of x and y. Then the PDF of x is, and I'm going to symbolize it with f sub x of little x. But that's nothing more than the um, Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't do this. I should do something else. Uh, so here I'm going to let A be a subset of R. Uh, so it's just any arbitrary subset of R. Then the, the L said the probability that x is an element of A is equal to um, the, this is what uh, okay, this is equal to um, the probability that x is an element of A and y is an element of of R, as we had before. Let me make room over here. We're almost done. Squeak proof. equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity integral over a of f of x comma y uh, this would be dx dy by definition of the joint uh, p df and then this interchanging uh, or switching the order of integration would be the integral of a minus infinity to infinity of l of x comma y. Um, this would be dy dx. And what we see right here is that what we end up having to integrate to um, get the probability that x is an element of a with respect to x is this box quantity. And remember, this is true for any A uh, that's a subset of R. So what this box quantity plays the role of is the probability uh, density function for X. And so that says, so L sub X of X is equal to this integral. Well, let's look at an example. Let's look at the same example we have. So as an example, we'll let f of x comma y be equal to, we had it as 5 sixteenths xy squared. We have 0 is less than x is less than y is less than 2, and 0 otherwise. do here is we're going to uh, find, uh, uh, let this be, I should say, in other words, be the joint PDF of X and Y, and our goal is, this time I'm going to find the PDF of Y, okay? and I'm going to call it F little f sub y of, of, of little y.
Okay, <clears throat> so here to do that, um, by, uh, by our fact, note, f sub y of little y is going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, we're trying to find f sub y of little y, so what we integrate is we integrate uh, f of x common y over the whole uh, whole uh, real line with respect to x, okay? Okay, so let's remember that f of x common y, we've drawn this before, it was non-zero only certain part of this box, that's that upper triangle region of this box. This is the region. Okay. So here, what I'm thinking is, um, for any fixed y, for a fixed y, what do the x values run from? They again run from 0 to 1. Okay, and so here, this is uh, 5 sixteenths x squared y dx. And that's what I have. So I'm sure I didn't make a mistake. What that's going to be equal to um, is going to be, let's see, so I was in a great respect to x, so I have 5 sixteenths x cubed over 3 y, and I evaluate that from 0 to y. These are x values. When I do that, I get 5 over 40 of a, Five over forty-eight. Um, here I will have um, y to the third over three times y, which is equal to. Uh, well, I've already handled the three, so this is just y to the fourth. Okay. And uh, and when we stick in x equals zero, we get zero. And so. Here, f sub y of y is equal to 5 over 48 um, y to the fourth that's what we Alright, so that's the example that I wanted to show. The next thing I want to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about, is the joint CDF. And here's the definition. Let x and y be random variables. Then, the joint CDF of x and y is, is denoted by big L of a, b, and given by big L of a, b is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to a, and y is less than or equal to b. And when x and y are both discrete, or x and y are both continuous, then here's what we can say. Continuation of this definition. Uh, so f of a b is equal to the sum over all x values. I'm not going to write out everything. Uh, less than or equal to a. Sum over all y values less than or equal to b of f of x 
comma y. Remember, the y and x values that we're dealing with here are ones where there is uh, the joint TMF is greater than zero. And this is a discrete case. So x, y, discrete. Here, this is the first comma two. F of a, b is equal to the integral. I'll write down for my sentence to be integral to my sentence to a of f of x comma y and this dx dy and here this is x and y continuous. And uh, what I want to do is an example and then we'll call it quits. So as a quick, <laughs> uh, we'll consider that same Joint PDF we have. F of x comma y is equal to 5 sixteenths, uh, I think it's x squared y. And wait just a second, I want to look back at something. Do you know I made a mistake? It's um, here, this is. So it'll be x, y squared. Okay? And that's here. 0 is less than x, is less than y, is less than 1. Okay? That's what we have. And 0 otherwise. And so it's going to affect the work that I did before uh, for finding. So we need to do a correction. I'm sorry. Uh, so in this example, let's first, let's find, let's go back and do this. I'm sorry. Let us uh, uh, find f sub y of y. Uh, remember, I did this just a minute ago. I didn't do it right because I didn't have the right function. So f sub y of y, what we're looking at is this region. I'm sorry. Okay. So here. So uh, this is going to be equal to the integral. This region, again, for a fixed y, the x is going to run from uh, 0 to y. Okay, this is 5 sixteenths xy squared, and then it's dx. So this is going to be 5 sixteenths x squared over 2, y squared, evaluating from 0 to y. And that ends up being uh, 5 30 seconds y to the 4. That's different than what I had before, okay? So I made a mistake uh, from the previous work because I worked with the wrong... Um, joint uh, probability density function. I misremembered what it was. And so this is the answer for the previous example, okay? And that was our problem. Well, let's continue on here. Working with this joint PDL of X and Y. So I didn't write that down. Let this, but I'm not writing it down, but we know that that means the joint PDF of X and Y. Then, uh, that's part A, find that, or correction. And here's the real part of this example. Find the C, the joint C. So here's the first thing I notice is that if remember what this is called, it's called F of A B. Now um, what I want you to notice is if A is less than one or B is less than one, then the region that we would be integrating over uh, would be a region. So here if A is less than one, it talks about X. So that's over here. I think this should be not one, but rather uh, zero. Okay. Hold oh, just a second. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I've made so many mistakes today. Um, I don't want to do this problem at this time. 
Instead, this was the correction that we had for the previous problem, okay, over here on the sideboard. And here is our example uh, for a discrete random variable, okay? So I'm going to change this. And as an example for a discrete random variable finding the CDF, I'm sorry about these mistakes. Uh, we're going to let f of x comma y be equal to this previous example we had, x plus y was 21, where x is 1, 2, y is equal to, uh, I think, 1, 2, or 3. So I'm looking at the discrete case. Be the uh, joint CDF for discrete random variables uh, X and Y find the joint. This is not the joint CDF, this is the joint PMF. Find the joint C of X and Y. Sorry, I made so many mistakes this time, but okay, this is the problem I want to do. Okay, so um, here's what I do. Look, what I notice is I'm looking. So if A is less than 1, okay, if A is less than 1, then, then part of what we're finding in the probability of it is that X is less than that number, which is less than 1, and that's nothing. There's no chance of that happening. Yeah, we're trying to change that and something else, but that first part can happen. So here's what I'll say to notice. If A is less than 1 or if B is less than 1, then... <clears throat> Uh, f of a comma b, uh, that's equal to zero. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the x, y plane, and here's one, and here's uh, one for y. And if you're to the left of one over here, definitely going to be the, the joint's going to be zero. And if you're below this one here, definitely going to be zero. So now we're going to break this up into cases. But what we're going to have some kind of differences are going to be occurring uh, from these specific output factors. And so I'm going to work really on uh, cases where I'm going to worry about A. So let's say 1 is less than or equal to A is less than 2. So that's going to give us some chance that the CDF is non-zero because the first part of it is the chance that really that X is um, equal to 1. Okay? So a subcase depends on what Y is doing. So subcase 1 has to do with what Y is doing. And let's say Y is sandwiched in between, or this B, sandwiched in between 1 and 2. So really, here's two, here's two. We're looking at this type of case here. That region along the x-axis, what does the CDF define over that region? And here, uh, what I would have is then f of AB is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to A and y is less than or equal to B. But if A is sandwiched in between 1 and 2, where it's big, we know it's bigger than or equal to 1, and B is sandwiched in between 1 and 2, where B is uh, bigger than or equal to 1, then really this is nothing more than the probability X is equal to, to 1 and Y is equal to 1. And and what that's equal to by the CDF, 1, 1, so this is F of 1, 1, and that's equal to 2 over 21. Okay.
M, uh, so this is subcase 2. Here is M, uh, B is bigger than or to yeah, less than 3. Okay, we know A is sandwiched in between 1 and 2, where it could be equal to 1, but not 2. Then, here's what we're looking at. M of AB, if that's going to be equal to, essentially, the probability that X is less than or equal to A and Y is less than or equal to B. Okay? But in this particular subcase, that's the probability X is equal to 1 and, I'll put this in parentheses, Y is equal to either 1 or Y is equal to 2. And what that is, that's equal to the probability X is equal to 1, Y is equal to 1, plus, because we can think of this as a union, this is an and, and so it ends up being this and that union with X equal to 1 uh, and Y equal to 2. And so those are mutually exclusive, so we add them. And so we use the joint uh, PMF here. And so we get 1, 1 plus F of 1, 2. And what that's equal to here is going to be, it's 1 plus 1, that's X plus Y, or 21 plus. Here this is 3 over 21, so we get 5 over 21. Here's subcase 3. This is if B is greater than or equal to 3. And what we get in this situation with A being sandwiched in between 1 and 2, inclusive of the 1, but exclusive of 2, this is the same thing. So L of AB in this situation. What that's equal to is going to be L of 1 and 1 plus L of 1 and 2 plus L of 1 and 3. And that's going to be equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4 over 21, and that's 29, oh, I'm sorry, that's 9 over 21. So that's what we get for that. Let's continue. Almost done. Now, here, this is a case, if you will, a case two, where um, if uh, A is now sandwiched, is now bigger than or equal to two. Okay. And remember, X was either one or two, so what if A is bigger than or equal to two? So we have subcases here, depending upon what B is. And then here, this is. If B is sandwiched in between 1 and 2, then big L of AB, what that is, is the probability that X is uh, equal to 1 or 2 and Y is equal to, in this case, it would be uh, 1. And what that's equal to is that's f of 1, 1 plus f of uh, 2, 1, and that's equal to 2 over 21 plus 3 over 21, and that equals to 5 over 21. Subcase 2, if 2 is less than or equal to B is less than 3, then L of AB, what that's going to be equal to is the probability that X is equal to 1 or X is equal to 2, and Y is equal to 1 or Y equals to 2. So here, that's going to be equal to uh, L, the, the 
join uh, PMF between x and y of 1, uh, 1 plus f of 1, 2 plus f of 2, 1 plus f of 2, 2. And what that's equal to is, again, this is 2 over 21 plus 3 over 21 plus 3 over 21 plus 4 over 21. And when I add those up, I get 12 over 21. And then finally, subcase 3, this is where B is bigger than A over 3. And that F of AB, in this case, would be the probability that X is less than, well, some number bigger than or equal to 2. So this is the same thing, X is less than or equal to 2, uh, some number bigger than or equal to 2. Uh, and uh, Y is less than or equal to uh, some number bigger than 3, we're calling it C. Bigger than or equal to 3. And here, I'm not going to say very much about it, except just remember what the little x values and the little y values are coming from. The little x values are 1 and 2, so they're definitely less than or equal to A. And the y values are uh, 1, 2, and 3, so they're definitely less than or equal to B. And so this is all the possible outcomes we could have. And so really, this is the sum, and I haven't been writing this down so much, where x is less than, but this is what we had written on that other side board for the definition of PDF or a way to calculate, less than or equal to 2, so that takes equal 1 to 2, and y is less than or equal to b, that's y running from 1 to 3 of f of x comma y, and that is equal to 1. So it's a summary Here's what f of x comma y is. I'm sorry, f of a comma b. It's equal to, obviously, thing is equal to found zero if a is less than one or b is less than one. Here it's two over 21. If yeah, 1 is less than or equal to A is less than 2, and 1 is less than or equal to B is less than 2. It was 5 over 21. If yeah, 1 is less than or equal to A is less than uh, 2, and 2 is less than or equal to B is less than 3. And here it was, uh, I think, 9 over 21. If yeah, 1 is less than or equal to A is less than 2, and B is bigger than or equal to 3. Then it's 5 over 21 again. If 1, I'm sorry, if A is greater than or equal to 2, and B is sandwiched between 1 and 2, where it could be equal to 1 but not 2. And then here we have 9, I think, no, it's 12 out of 21, excuse me. If A was greater than or equal to 2, and uh, here is 2 is less than or equal to B, it's less than 3. And finally, we have 1 if A is greater than or equal to 2 and B is greater than or equal to 3. And listen, I, I think what I did was fine, but I'd like just to explain just a little bit further and we'll call it quits. Uh, you know, let us take uh, this one. So here, F of A, B in this situation. Well, we've already calculated it, but I didn't use that formula that I had written on this side of the board for computing the joint C to get very well. This is equal to the sum of all x values less than or equal to A, sum of all y values less than or equal to B, of f of x comma y, the joint PML. And that's what we had written before. And so what this was, and I've written this down, really this is the sum. I bring this down, but not in this much detail. The x is less than or equal to 2. Um, well, the x values are less than a, but we know a is greater than or equal to 2. So the x values that you can take on is 1 to 2. Less than b, um, well, b is somewhere in between less than or equal to 2. b is somewhere in between 2 and 3. So y would be equal to 1 to 2 of f of x comma y. And this is what I wrote down very quickly when I was trying to compute this. 
I did this mentally, but what we have is f of 1, 1 plus f of 1, 2 plus f of 2, 1 plus f of 2, 2. And so again, this was 2 out of 21 plus 3 out of 21 plus uh, 3 out of 21 plus 4 out of 21 because f of x comma y was x plus y over 21. And so when I add these up, I do indeed get 12 out of 21. So I know I did this twice. I'm sorry if I bothered you about doing this twice, but I just wanted to explain it. Okay. I'm sorry about all the mistakes. Uh, that concludes this lecture. Thank you for your time.